creating a histogram, you get a little bit of choice. I told you it's a, it's a special kind of bar graph. How many bars do we want? I'm going to say eight. You can choose a number between five and ten for the data set that you get to do. There is an art to choosing how many bars you want, but we're not going to get into that. Maybe if you take statistics. All right, so I'm going to go with eight bars. Then what I want to do is find the smallest and largest numbers in my data set. You're going to click on this, this link here to get your data set. Your data set's actually going to be the same as mine. I'm just going to go through losses and you'll go through wins. So this is what it looks like. There's a list of a whole bunch of chess games that got played. And the only thing that you really need are these, these numbers here. And you need to know was it a win or a loss. So wins are the plus signs. Losses are the minus signs, the red minus signs. You will be looking for plus signs. I'm looking for minus signs. And I want to find my smallest and my largest amounts of time. That's what these that's what these numbers are, the amount of time that the game took. Looking only at losses, I see a 79. I see a 22. All right, I see a 19. 79, 19 are my winners right now. You do want to take some time to actually look through and get the numbers because if you are right, 91 and 9, 91 minutes, 9 minutes, because if you miss a minimum or a maximum, it's going to throw off everything else. So 91 minutes is the maximum, 9 minutes is the minimum. Then maximum minus minimum gives me a range. 91 minus 9 is 82, is my range. Range divided by how many bars did I want? I wanted 8 bars. So this is going to be 10 point something, 10.25. Now, that will be my bucket size, and I say round up. So I'm going to change that to 11. Do we want to include cuts with uppers or lowers? I'm going to say lowers. Um, I rounded, you know what, I'm going to say uppers. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I'll show you what it means when, when we come across it, hopefully. Then I'm ready to go. All right. So making this frequency chart, we're going to start at the minimum nine count by the bucket size. So count by 11s, nine to 20, 20 to 31, 31 to 42. These are going to be, be, be my buckets where I put each of my values. Okay, and then I'm going to start a, uh, a set of tallies. I'm going to go through this list. You'll be looking for wins, these green plus signs. I'm looking for losses. And I'm just going to keep track of how many losses fall into each of these ranges. So I've got a 22. That's in here. 42. 42 is a cut. All right, this is what I'm talking about when I said cut. It shows up in two different buckets, and I said I'm going to keep my cuts with upper buckets, which means I'll go to this one. 45, 40, so 45, 40, 45 again. 74. 66 is in the same bucket. 20, again, is a cut. It's going to go with the upper. Okay, and I'm going to go through this whole list. Another 28, 67. And you don't need to, you don't need to watch me go through the whole list. I'm actually probably going to do this on paper rather than finish it on the computer. But we'll pick up when I have my frequency chart done. You can see right there. Actually, also note this, I had to redo it because while I was counting up my items, I found out that there was a game that only took seven minutes, which is what I warned you about in the beginning. If you don't actually find your minimum and maximum in the beginning, you're going to end up doing extra work because I had to shift my numbers down and then restart my count so that my minimum would be at 
seven. So take your time to find the minimum and the maximum and set up your buckets so that you don't have to go back and, and make changes later. Now we're ready to make the histogram. The biggest bar that I have is going to need to be 23 tall. So I'll keep that in mind and set this up. We want two axes. So you'll have a horizontal axis. Uh, these axes are actually interchangeable. You can put you can put the bars so that they're facing vertically or horizontally, but typically we we have the bars extend vertically. Okay, so one of my two axes is gonna be frequency, and I'm gonna make that my vertical axis. Frequency, that's the count, how often do games take this long. And then my other axis is going to be the actual length of the games. Actually, I'm going to say length of losses because I only kept track of the losses. And you'll probably say length of wins because you're only going to keep track of the wins. I'm going to put my numbers along the bottom those cut points so starting at the minimum and counting by 11s 7 make this line a little longer then my frequencies we're going to start at 0 and maybe count by fours right i said i have to get up to 23 so i can stop at 24 That sideways. We want zero lined up with the axis. And now for my bars. I'm gonna mess a little bit with this width. See if I have the right width so that it can go all the way across. You want your bars to be the same exact width. You want them to be touching. All right, cool, 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 cool. I might put that back just a little bit. All that's left is for me to get these bars to the right heights. And looking at my frequency table, my first bar is five, my second bar is 18. So. A little bit above four, halfway between 16 and 20, 16, 14, 16. Every good data display has a title. So let's give this a title, chess games. And then after that, it's just a matter of, do you, do you want to, do you want to change the look and the feel of the, of the graph in any way by messing with color or size of different uh, fonts and whatnot. But that is a, histogram and you're going to do the same thing for Johnny's chess wins.